Uh, most people who've had a kidney stone can recall that it's incredibly painful. Um, you hear, I hear a lot of patients say it's the worst pain ever. It's like childbirth. Um, there are a few, a small minority of lucky people who pass kidney stones without any symptoms. Um, in terms of what they feel like and what they describe, it tends to come in waves, and we call this renal colic or ureteric colic, depending on what part, uh, the, the sto where the stone is in the urinary tract. Um, typically, it's on one side of the side where the stone is uh, moving, and it re radiates um, to the groin area. Uh, patients, when it's severe uh, in the colic phase, in the acute phase, it, they can't get comfortable with, with it. Um, and this is probably due to the stone moving in the urinary system, system brushing onto the very sensitive surface lining cells. Um, other kidney stone symptoms uh, may be related to um, infection, so burning uh, when passing urine, uh, urinating frequency, uh, feeling that you're incompletely emptying your bladder, maybe some discoloration of the urine um, when that sort of irritation when the stone's moving in the system. Um, there might be uh, smelly or cloudy urine. You might feel uh, nauseated, uh, sick or queasy due to the intensity of the pain. There might be um, clear signs of infection, such as fevers, chills and vomiting. And, and obviously, if those severe symptoms occur, you need to seek urgent medical attention. Uh, yes, I, I think there should be a cause for concern, in my opinion, just with, like with any uh, medical problem. If it's severe, as I, as I mentioned, any worrying associated symptoms, such as fevers, you may need to seek emergency medical attention. Um, I think um, if you've got niggling pains um, on, on, on the back um, intermittently and you need to have an answer for your pains because it could get worse, I think it'd be important to seek medical attention uh, either with your GP or, or directly to your urologist and they will uh, be able to assess you uh, properly and uh, arrange tests, typically blood tests and scans to first of all identify the stone and get an idea of uh, what sort of best treatments uh, that's required. There are um, often lifestyles and jobs which, which would dictate uh, the urgency for stone treatment. For example, pilots um, who have to be allowed to fly com knowing to, uh, known to be completely stone free and uh, people who work with heavy uh, machinery. Um, some stones do, especially if you've got the severe pain and the normal painkillers you take are not effective. If there's any features of blockage, so the pain's increasing despite the, the treatment or any um, signs of infection, um, immediate medical treatment would be required and, and, and strongly advised. This depends on really patient and stone factors, including the size of the stones, where, where the location of the stones, um, is it in the tube, kidney draining tube, the ureter or in the kidney in a safe position, um, and how much bother it's causing the patient. Um, I think um, prevention is key because um, if you follow the, uh, the NICE guidelines, uh, which is free to access for anyone, um, there's lots of good advice to avoid having a stone episode at all. And certainly if there's any um, high risk factors such as um, family history, um, that would point to, 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 to the requirements to adhere to that as best as possible. And the main points from those guidance is, I would say to my patients, is to drink 10 to 12 cups of fluid per day. Uh, make sure your urine is as clear color and, and not yellow. Um, every time you pass urine, cut down the salt in your diet and animal protein. In terms of treatments, uh, there can be medical treatments for certain, certain stone types. And, uh, you know, um, we've seen patients um, on medications completely dissolve a very large stone. These tend to be the uric acid uh, type of stones. Um, in, in terms of treatments, um, shockwave lithotripsy is an outpatient delivered treatment where we focus uh, high energy ultrasound scan uh, energy through the skin to the kidney stone itself. Um, and it's very well tolerated. 
and we can do multiple sessions and it does avoid the need for surgery, which is the next um, treatment that we offer. Um, there's different approaches to, to, uh, to, to deal with the stone with surgery. You can either pass telescopes through the water pipe, um, up through the kidney draining tube, the ureter into the kidney, and then when you visualize the stone directly through these small telescopes, we can use um, energy, typically laser energy, to vaporize stones. Um, another approach, typically for larger stones, is um, with x-ray guidance puncturing directly through the skin um, into the kidney and, and removing stones that way. That's called percutaneous nephrolithotomy. If there's blood in the urine, that needs to be investigated, as with any blood in the urine uh, things, and, and that, that could be a sign of um, of, of kidney uh, and bladder, bladder tumour, so that needs uh, to be investigated on an urgent basis. We, are, we have seen patients present with two conditions, with kidney stones as well as cancers, uh, and so obviously once that's identified and diagnosed, uh, the treatment will obviously focus on the cancer treatment first, and then dealing with the stones in that order afterwards. Uh, some patients have a strong family history, so every member of their family has had kidney stones. Um, so you, you can imagine that they're more likely to have it. There's a, a few rare genetic conditions such as cysteine urea, which um, Patients tend to have their first stone episode in their teenage years and throughout their lifetime that, that they are well known to their urologists for multiple treatment, for requiring multiple treatments. So they're, they're the patients with metabolic stones. Um, some, some environmental factors such as um, working in a hot climate and, and I suppose dehydration has a part to play in, in um, having increased stone, uh, stone features. Um, I suppose that there are other aspects being male compared to female, so men tend to ha have more stones than, than women, uh, but on average one in ten overall uh, would have one stone episode in their lifetime. 